so we have reached the upper plate. We just have to get out of this tunnel. And this is the first episode I'm going to be utilizing the NVIDIA RTX Voice. It's a audio recording piece of software which uses the AI portions of NVIDIA graphics cards to eliminate background noise. So I hope it works. The residential area is just beyond this gate. Mind doing the honors? There wasn't really a lot of time in the original game that you spent on the plate in Midgar. You spent a lot of time in the slums, but not on the plate. This is the Sector 7 plate, which you never even went to. You've got an arm on you. We, of course, were on the plate earlier on in the game while escaping from the reactor that we bombed. But the whole experience was colored by the fact that it was after the bomb had gone off, and there was wreckage and damage everywhere. Here we are. The employee housing district, where they put you when your parents work for Shinra. While their reactors were slowly killing the planet, we were living the good life. It still feels strange to me that we're spending so much time with these secondary avalanche characters. Uh, spoiler once again. Spoiler alert, but these characters didn't last too long in the original game. They were a part of the first bombing mission, but they sort of only made it so far into the reactor. And during the second bombing mission, which we haven't reached yet, they didn't even go in the reactor. Then you don't see them again until the collapse of the Sector 7 plate, in which case they all died. Um, so it's still strange to me seeing them here. Figures. Still leaves the lights on every night for the girl who only comes home once every other blue moon. Mom's an old fashioned type like that. Think she'll make us pizza? Her Midgar special? She's quite the cook. Quick to whip up finger licking food even if you drop by in the dead of night. And she loves guests who ask for seconds or thirds. Okay, let's head in. Cloud, you know what to do. Why don't you wait around the corner over there? Ah, uh, okay. It's a shame you won't get to try the Midgar special. You would have really liked it. I feel a little bit disappointed that uh, Cloud doesn't go to go in there and get some pizza. But, um, what are you gonna do? Can't win them all. With your help, we won't need luck. You'll take on just about any job, right? Well, I need you to rob my house. Think you can do that for me? Huh. Go in through the back door when the coast is clear. A signal will be obvious. Once the lights come on, it's go time. Time to go. Cloud is an orphan. Tifa is an orphan. I'm not sure, but I believe all of Barrett's family, except for Marlene, are dead. So, every character seems to have some sort of a connection to Shinra, something that Shinra has, Shinra has done to hurt their family. But at least in Jesse's case, she seems to have a family. Biggs and Wedge don't seem to, so Jesse's kind of unique in that regard. Inside, you'll find a room with two doors. Don't take the one in front of you. You want the room on the right. That's where you'll find it. I could be wrong, but I thought Midgar was in its entirety a city dedicated to Shinra employees, like a factory town. We'll be chatting mom up in the kitchen, so don't even bother being quiet. There's no way she'll ever hear you. Dad'll be in there, but it's okay. I need you to grab his Shinra ID card. And yeah, I know I should do it myself, but... <laughs> but I honestly don't think I'm up to it. Just do this for me, okay? Well, that explains so much. Her father isn't dead, but he's in some kind of a coma, and of course... Shinra is going to be in some way responsible. Now this is the 
What's this? This is what I've been waiting for. Dear Mom and Dad, Sorry for not getting in touch sooner, but... I'm working at the Gold Saucer as an actress now. It wasn't easy, and I had a lot of help from people along the way. But I managed to land a starring role. And closed our two tickets to my play. Looking forward to seeing you both there. Jesse Raspberry as... The Princess? How about that? Jesse has a last name. Raspberry. Of course, uh, in the original game, she was such an unimportant character, really more of a plot device, really, that she didn't uh, warrant having a last name. This isn't it. So you go and you take a character like that, and you, you beef out her presence in the story. It makes sense that she's going to have to have some kind of a last name, especially if you're going to encounter her family in some way. Who's also got this um, added backstory here. Uh, it turns out Jessie's an actress, or a, an aspiring actress. I guess she gave all of that up when she joined Avalanche. There was also the reference to the Gold Saucer, which is a, an amusement park that you run into after leaving Midgar, which will not be in this game. My dad, he was a maintenance supervisor at the reactor. In a certain way, this seems kind of petty to me, that Jesse's opposition to Shinra seems to be rather personally based. Thanks. Now, if you look at Tifa, you look at Barrett, they, at least on the surface, seem to be going about the whole bio, or not bio, but um, eco-terrorism thing, based on the idea that they are protecting the planet, that the Mako reactors are in some way damaging the planet, and... They feel justified in doing what they do because they're protecting the entire world. Whereas Jesse seems, I don't know, perhaps to be more motivated by the personal things involving her father. Her father's in a coma. It'll be talked about later on that she thinks perhaps she can save him by shutting down the reactor. But of course, that's not really any different than what the other characters have. Both Tifa and Barrett are motivated by personal reasons, revenge against Shenra more than anything else. So she's not really any different. When are you going to give up on the Gold Saucer? How long has it been since you even performed? Uh... A lot of people really rely on Jesse. As a stagehand though, right? You can be one of those anywhere. So why not come home and get a job at the Sector 8 Theater? Uh, I'll think about it. You know, I'd really love to stay and chat, but we gotta go. So soon? Yeah, well, we hadn't even planned on dropping by. But Wedge wanted some of your famous mm. pizza. So good. Sure I can't tempt you with some more? Maybe just a couple slices, Mrs. R. Wedge! Hey, I'm, I'm doing it for you guys. You don't want me going to work on an empty stomach. I'm planning on using a weaker blasting agent this time. Since I can't get in touch with my supplier, our only option is to loot a warehouse owned by Shinra. Hey there. This it? Now comes the hard part. I'm gonna use this to sneak into the 7-6 Annex. <sighs> All right. Let's get to it. Sorry, but you're staying outside. Only I know what to steal from where, so it's gotta be me who goes in. So, we came all this way just to eat pizza? <laughs> you think I'd let you off that easy? You're gonna earn every slice helping Cloud. Just do the thing where you draw everyone's attention away, like you did at my parents. What's the word again? Maybe I'm more nervous than I thought. Diversion. Yeah, that. Nice one, military man. So what? Does this mean we're gonna ask some Shinra folks out to dinner? Uh, you know damn well what she means. Uh, While you're inside, we make sure the guards are focused on the outside, yeah? Exactly. Couldn't have put it any better. When you see a flare go up, that's your cue. Rush the front gates and make for the warehouse plaza. The more hell you raise, the more time you buy me. Huh. You're gonna run this guy into the ground, aren't you? How much time do you think you'll need? Not too much. I'll be in and out. I'll send up another flare when I'm done. 
We rendezvous in the vacant lot up ahead. Hold on. How are we supposed to get back to the slums? Wait for the first train? No. I want to be back before that. Don't worry. I have something worked out. Now, let's get this done. <laughs> well, that diversion's not gonna create itself. Jesse's dad was in there, right? Yeah. Mako poisoning. <sighs> Happened while Jesse was doing a show with the gold saucer. Ah. What do you care? No. I want to hear it. Jessie always wanted to be an actress. Worked her ass off for years. Until finally she caught a break. The top billing. Parents were thrilled. And then, right before opening night... Her dad had an accident. Collapsed from overwork. And in the worst possible place. Mako storage. Lay there half a day before someone found him. Been like that ever since. No change whatsoever. And that's what got her into planetology. And led her to seek out Avalanche. How far we've come. Jesse's got a theory about it. Thinks her dad's spirit is stuck now. Between his body and the heart of the planet. So if we don't shut down the reactors soon... He'll get caught up in the flow and... Poof. <laughs> What's so funny? Just that I understand how you feel. Unlike most of the time. I see. I wonder if these two knew Jesse from before her time with Avalanche. It kind of seems like they did. But how would they have known her? Hmm. Mako's the essence of life itself. Of memory and hope. It's not something you burn in a reactor just to keep the lights on. Hell no. Oh, uh... Don't tell Jessie about this little chat, okay? When she gets pissed, ooh, she gets punchy. Well, no promises. He's serious, Cloud. She'll beat the shit out of us. Not my problem. This guy. Hey, it's the lot Jesse was talking about. We rendezvous here when we've got what we came for. Gotta stay hidden. Just need to get past this gate. Wait. Where are the guards? <laughs> Looks like someone beat us here. And I don't think it was Jesse! This had better not get in the way of our plans. It won't. Don't see anyone. What the hell happened? Hey man, the plaza's that way. Warehouses are further in. Jesse's supposed to be circling around from the back, right? Seems like there's going to be a lot of instances where you wander into a place and find a bunch of corpses. So Cloud better get used to this. Where are you going, Cloud? <laughs> this way. I didn't exactly know where to go. There's a training center down here which I didn't use. It's kind of a strange place for it. This is the kind of thing I would have expected to have seen in the Sector 7 slums, where you could get at it before the mission, or you could get at it after the mission, or do whatever. I didn't bother doing with it because I don't think it's necessary. Perhaps there would have been some sort of a prize if you won, but I didn't bother checking. No need for us to rush. Let's scout it out first. I can handle this solo. What? You're trying to keep us out of it now? Don't be a jackass. We're in this together. Don't expect me to save you. If you need to check your gear, now's the time. Give the word when you're good to go. You can use that vending machine over there to stock up. This game is rather forgiving when it comes to whether you bought items or not. The dungeons are pretty long, but the um, in the original game, and like most JRPGs beforehand, you have your points where you enter a town, and you take that time in the town to upgrade your weapons, upgrade your armor, upgrade all or buy all your items so you feel like you're going to need for the next leg of the trip. 
then you're really only going to have to survive off what you have. You may find a few items dropping off of enemies or in treasure chests or something like that, but for the most part, you need to prepare early. This game puts these rest workbench or these rest uh, park benches and these energy drink machines that go and spit out potions and shit like that. So you have a vending machine that you can buy potions for, which kind of makes it it's an unusual balance because it allows the dungeons to be a lot longer because you don't have to worry so much about running out of supplies. But maybe the dungeons are too long. When you leave something at home or just need a bite to eat, vending machines can be real lifesavers. Whenever you're ready, Remind me, just let us you've know. got summoning materia, don't you? There's no better way to deal with big groups. You'd be crazy not to equip it. Okay. Let's go over the plan one last time. <sighs> you start things off by cutting loose where everyone can see you. <laughs> and us? We're the backup. First, we climb high enough to get a vantage point, then we go to town on them. Hey. So, what did you want to talk about? When spring comes, I'm leaving town. I'm going to Midgar. Should have figured. All the guys are leaving. But, but I'm not like them. I'm not going just to look for work. I'm going to be a soldier. The best of the best. Like Sephiroth. The great war hero, huh? Hmm. Isn't it pretty hard to become a soldier? Yeah. So I won't be back for a long time. Guess not. Think you'll be in the papers? I'll try. Just... Promise me one thing. When we're older, and you're a famous soldier, if I'm ever trapped or in trouble, promise you'll come and save me. Huh? That's what heroes do. They save people. Please? Just once. Uh... Come on, promise me. Fine. I promise. you're having second thoughts. I know we have to think big if we're going to make a difference. But not like this. I just... I feel trapped. <sighs> That's the signal! <sighs> All according to plan. Let's go. Cloud is running into the fight, but he's going to do it in the next episode. Target target sight. Light him up. <laughs> 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 